Trouble with Being Born by Emile Charon. It is not worth the bother of killing yourself, since you always kill yourself too late. I have committed every crime but that of being a father. Having always lived in fear of being surprised by the worst, I have tried in every circumstance to get a head start flinging myself into misfortune long before it occurred. I get along quite well with someone only when he is at his lowest point and has neither the desire nor the strength to restore his habitual illusions. This very second has vanished forever, lost in the anonymous mass of the irrevocable. It will never return. I suffer from this, and I do not. Everything is unique, and insignificant. Each time I fail to think about death, I have the impression of cheating, of deceiving someone in me. My vision of the future is so exact that if I had children, I should strangle them here and now. In permitting man, nature has committed much more than a mistake in her calculations, a crime against herself. What is that one crucifixion compared to the daily kind any insomniac endures? Sometimes I wish I were a cannibal, less for the pleasure of eating someone, than for the pleasure of vomiting him. The unfortunate thing about public misfortunes is that everyone regards himself as qualified to talk about them. Every friendship is an inconspicuous drama, a series of subtle wounds. Even when they desert hell, men do so only to reconstruct it elsewhere. The more gifted a man is, the less progress he makes on the spiritual level. Talent is an obstacle to the inner life. We should repeat to ourselves, every day, I am one of the billions dragging himself across the earth's surface. One, and no more. This banality justifies any conclusion, any behavior or action, debauchery, chastity, suicide, work, crime, sloth, or rebellion, whence it follows that each man is right to do what he does. The only thing the young should be taught is that there is virtually nothing to be hoped for from life. One dreams of a catalog of disappointments which would include all the disillusionments reserved for each and every one of us, to be posted in the schools. Fanaticism is the death of conversation. We do not gossip with a candidate for martyrdom. Deep inside, each man feels, and believes, himself to be immortal, even if he knows he will perish the next moment. We can understand, admit, realize everything, except our death, even when we ponder it unremittingly and even when we are resigned to it. Without the faculty of forgetting, our past would weigh so heavily on our present that we should not have the strength to confront another moment, still less to live through it. Life would be bearable only to frivolous natures, those in fact who do not remember.
When someone complains that his life has come to nothing, we need merely remind him that life itself is in an analogous situation, if not worse. When I torment myself a little too much for not working, I tell myself that I might just as well be dead and that then I would be working still less. Old age is nature's self-criticism. Man will not last. Ambushed by exhaustion, he will have to pay for his too original career. For it would be inconceivable and contra naturam that he drag on much longer and come to a good end. This prospect is depressing, hence likely. What I know at sixty, I knew as well at twenty. Forty years of a long, a superfluous, labor of verification. The more injured you are by time, the more you seek to escape it. 